सूर्याय नम ओं सौ सुमाय नम ओं कुं कुजाय नम ओं बुं बुधाय नम ओं गुं गुरव नम ओं शुं शुक्राय नम ओं शं शनाश्वराय नम ओं राम राहव नम ओं कें केतव नम ओं Uh, people will say that born in Venus is going to be a a very specific scheme. But here I pointed out one person that was born, one woman that was born in Barani, and a man that was born in Barani. A woman that was born in Purva Pauguni, a man that was born in Purva Pauguni, a woman that was uh, born in Purva Ashada and a man that was born in Purva Ashada. In the next slide, um, here you can go and click it with the link there. For several people that were born in Barani, and I took two, and the same for Purva Bogoni and Purva Ashada. It will appear like this in the website. Okay, Barani Pada um for female celebrities, Barani Pada dois. Pada three, pada two, pada three, pada four, and so on. Okay. What we want to to take from this is um, that scheme here that we are going to start in this slide number. Which no is this slide? It's not appearing here. Slide fifteen. Okay. We went through the life of Madonna in the second free class. And there are different aspects that is important when we go through analysis, why the moon period for her was so important and when why Rahu uh, period right now is not that famous and so. So how do we do to evaluate a chart? First thing, we take which karmic period the person is in okay and when we take that we go to the chart and they, there is a lot of fundamentals there and we see in which uh, karmic box in which rashi is there in which which karmic house is there above in which nakshatra what are relations? What are the Lord? And look, there is a whole Jyotisha course right there. Okay. It's like one, two years studying Jyotisha to understand a little bit of that and say, okay, I'm starting to walk by my own feet there. And since this level of understanding requires a um, uh, considerable amount of study, it's usually very arid to start to study Jyotisha. People say, look, it's too complicated. I need to understand the relation with this and that. And I'm going back to Ayurveda. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> I looked through the window and I said, mm, too big to jump. <laughs> I'm not going to jump there. Okay. And in this course here, we are starting with some um, direct information that even you know almost nothing about Jyotish, you are going to say, ha, huh, at least I know that this is karmic type one to nine, and this will create the framework around the window, around the board, around the, you say, but look, the picture is not there. <laughs> but you say, at least we have the framework, okay? So when we are going to put the picture there, it's going to be hanging in something. If we just go for the picture and you don't have the framework, what happens? You put in the wall the picture and it's not, it doesn't stand there because the biggest difference from Jyotisha to Western approach is that your chart is moving in time. Okay? In the Western approach, the planets are transiting through your natal chart. And these are creating impacts. 
this is also taken in account, okay? But the starting point, the evaluational point, you know that, uh, that blank uh, point of the compass that you can draw a circle around it. What is the name of that blank uh, point? Okay, you understand. If you take that blank point pointer to another place, all the circles that are going to be able to be drawn is going to be related to that compass, right? To that center. So each karmic period will move our karmic compass to different spots of, your, of our charts. And they are going to be activated. They are going to be illuminated. And that seed that was on the ground or it was on the cabinet, it will be brought to light. It will be brought to life. Okay? So understanding that our chart, it, they, it moves through time. We always go, we are going to put that question. Who am I now? Okay? And here with this course, we are going to have the following answer. I'm supposed to be like that in that time. I'm supposed to be in a broad sense, not a very specific manner, but in general um, overview, you are going to understand. I'm in my third, I'm in my fourth, I'm in my fifth, I'm in my second, I'm in my sixth karmic age. That means da 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 da. Okay? That's my X on my Cartesian plane. The other one is going to be who is uh, governing, who is directing that movie? Oh, it's Rahu, it's Venus, it's Saturn, it's whatever. Okay? So I'm not going to be able to fulfill that karmic um, function without understanding the nature, the flavor, the inclination of that director. Okay? And this creates a very important foundation for us to understand the Jyotish in a dynamic process and not only as, oh, I was born with this chart, so this will going to happen in my life, okay? That's usually a, a westernized way of seeing through Jyotish because the natal chart is static, not uh, evolutionary, not dynamic, not uh, progressive or whatever, whatever, okay? Is this clear? Yes. Um, now, we are starting the first Mahadasha, and this can be up to 20 years, okay? Uh, I also have this type, uh, karmic type, so <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> uh, Kita is Barani, I'm Purva Palguni, and as we spoke, because I'm Purva Palguni, my fifth Mahadasha is going to be different from hers and so, okay? But we share the same similarity, that is, the first Mahadasha, the person will start the karma journey feeling like a royal dignity, where all the family is there to serve, it can be friends also, it's princess desires. There will usually be a search for material enjoyment and people around telling tending to be excessively available. I have a sentence from my brother <laughs> that it was not said by me, okay? He said, we, uh, we pampered you too much, okay? <laughs> so in the first karmic period, there is going to be a tendency of people that is born in uh, type two, Venus, for people willing to pamper that person. If they are going to be able to pamper, if the pamper is going to be successful, if the pampering is going to be good, or if the pampering is going to be terrible, I'm not judging the effect of pampering. I'm saying that people will be willing for that, okay? Because people 
uh, usually born in this nakshatra will have this energy or this energetic that people say, oh, this person is so cute. This person is so lovable. This person is so... Um, uh, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> okay? It doesn't matter if it's going to take one year, 20 years. It's going to be maximum 20 years. It's going to be minimum one second. Okay? Every karmic period, as a first karmic period, can end in one second. This is not very common. Okay? Or it will take up to the maximum here 20 years, okay? But in this karmic framework, we need to point out this. If the person is born in the fourth part of this, that means that the person is born with the moon from 10 degrees to 13 degrees 20 of uh, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius, there is going to be a problem here, okay? And we are going to see that the problem is that the second, the third, and the fourth is going to be very short. Look, this is going to be six, 10, and seven. This is going to be summing 23 years. And this only happens in this combination, not anywhere else. You can write down that sentence and then you understand. The only newcomer that is really powerful is the one that are born from 10 degrees to 13 degrees 20, the moon of Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. This will create that the person will reach the fifth karmic period around 23, 24, 25, 26. And usually people reach the fifth karmic period with 50. Okay? So this creates a big uh, gap between what is the social expectation and going through the fifth karmic period is going through the place where we feel it's not that we deserve, it's not that we want, it's not that we like, okay? We feel that we need to do something important with our lives, okay? So people will be kind of judged to be, you're too young to be behaving like Om Gurave Namah Om Gurave Namah Om Gurave Namah Om Gurave Namah